six yards. He was wide open. After the turn, he's got a man. Harper going deep. Caught. Well, welcome to another Husker talk here, and we want to discuss the offensive coordinator. I've had a lot of responses, a lot of questions about uh, Marcus Satterfield. Should we? Should Rule move on? Should Rule fire him? And I kind of made the remark, and I've been responding on Facebook and stuff, and I kind of made the remark, you know, now since they have this, this unlimited coaching that they could bring and hire, and I know loyal, I know Rule's a loyal guy, and Satterfield's his guy, and he's not going to fire him for this. I mean, I and I don't think he deserves to be that, but maybe he needs some help maybe he needs to maybe move over and let bring someone in that's got the numbers to prove it and so i wanted to go through some names out there and some of the top offensive coordinators right now that's kind of proven it over the few years at different schools and there's one i really want to that i really like and i really wish they would consider and it's probably going to be a surprise to everyone. But I like him for a reason or a couple reasons, to be honest with you. But uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I want to see what you guys think about it. And, and if you had someone else in mind, tell me what you think. Or if you think Satterfield should continue, which I don't think many's going to think he is. And I know it's not all his fault. It's kind of like coaches. You know, when a team's not doing well for years or whatever, the coaches get fired. Ain't the, really the coach really fall. The players ain't producing. That's just kind of how it goes. And it seems like all these coaching stats, we've seen it. We've seen it here. They bring in their own guys. They're so loyal. They don't want to make a change. The offense looks like crap. I mean, what would we think about Callahan if he was willing to let Bo, Bo Pelini stay and run the defense? Callahan had the offense going. Problem is that we were losing 70 to 63. But what if he said, hey, that's if Bo would have stayed. But if he went and got a decent, just a decent defensive coordinator, we might be, we might have sit with a couple national championships and we would have saw Callahan as a different person. So it's not out of the ordinary to see this. So I want to go through this and see what you guys think and, and, and give you about three names that I looked up. And there's a lot of them, so not to make this long, to three that I kind of liked, and there's more. Uh, and then the one at the end that I really, really like and, and feel like I wish Rule would go with. Doesn't mean they need to fire Marcus Satterfield. Just means maybe they ought to move on on the offensive coordinator. So, like always, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does help the channel. Uh, gets it out there. Doesn't cost you anything. And, of course, like always, smash that like button. So, if you guys don't mind, let's get into this. And I want to talk about, I want to talk about, let's let's first talk about Marcus Satterfield, which is our current offensive coordinator. He's 48 years old, former wide receiver and punter uh, at Ten East Tennessee. And of course, like I said, all obviously our current offensive coordinator. So the question we need to ask, is it time to move on from Marcus Satterfield? And can rule hire another offensive coordinator and just let Sat just coach the tight ends or maybe learn? And if that's the case, so who could rule hire? So I want to get into that. I really want to start with Tim Cramsey. Tim Cramsey is a four is 49 years old. He's a former quarterback out of New Hampshire, University of New Hampshire. He's currently the offensive coordinator at the University of Memphis, and he's been around. He's done very well. There, his offenses have always done pretty good. He, uh, in 2023, he led Memphis to a 10 and three record, and he went over Iowa State in the Liberty Bowl. Uh, they were sixth in scoring at 39.4, tenth in passing at 306.5, and total offense of 458. And I think that would fit well with the Huskers. And obviously, we need some talent. But when you go into Memphis, 
Memphis always has some decent players here and there, but they're not loaded with four or five star players. So he's done it with lesser players. And I feel like he could do well and it'd be something that Dylan Riola can grow on because that's the one thing I think everybody worries about. If you stick with Satterfield, and I know Dylan ain't going to throw his offensive coordinator under the bus, but does he sit back and go, man, do I want to sit here and waste my four years? You know, he sat here and watched Martinez coming here and Adrian struggle and then left and done well at Kansas State and then is kicking butt up there in Canada. And I know this ain't Scott Frost's team. That was Scott Frost. This is Matt Rule team, Matt Rule's offensive coordinator. But I, I wasn't, I'm sorry, he takes offense to it, but I really wasn't thrilled about this hire for offensive coordinator. I know he came out of South Carolina and did okay over there, but didn't really light it up, light it up that I would want, mainly with the players he had. He, he definitely had a lot better players than here. And so I want to go through and see some of these other names. So Tim Cramsey is one a choice that I, I, I thought of and I think would do real well. And I wondered kind of guys, what what do you guys think? You know, is it something that you would consider? You know, is it something that put a spark in this team? But he's not my number one choice. He's not who I would probably want to go with. I would probably accept him. But let's move on to the second one. And I think he's only 30 years old. He's young. He's a former UTEP quarterback. He's the current uh, currently at offense coordinator at Texas State. And his teams in the first year at Texas State averaged 36.7 points per game. 40, he, they scored 40 or more points in six of the 13 games they played. Averaged 457.6 yards in total offense per game. 186.7 being rushing and 270.9 being passing. Now, this is done at Texas State. Again, people might stop and look and go, uh, well, you know, he's not, they're not playing in Power 5 schools and all that. But remember, a lot of your coaches, a lot of your good offensive coordinators have come from these schools. Um, look at Nettie, he What was he at? James Madison. So you can't, you can't really say that. And I understand he's the head coach. But – He's another one that I consider he'd be young, but again, is it one that you come in and think he's going to do well right away? Because guys, you guys are like me. I'm sure you are. We've waited long enough. And I understand everybody's talked about being patient. Rules talked about being patient. And I hope rule understands we've been patient for years, a decade. And we do got to understand as much as we want to harp on Satterfield and rule. This is still their only their second season, and they hadn't even been here two years yet. They won't be here two years till the end of till the end of November, end of this month, beginning of December. So he, they haven't really had a chance to bring their people in. And you got to understand, he's got to recruit to a team that's lost all these years, hasn't went to a bowl game in these years. Think about it. When I went to a bowl game in eight years. That means a lot of these players that are graduating and they're trying to recruit was like nine or 10 years old before they made a bowl last bowl. And even then they weren't the greatest. So they've never really seen Nebraska that great. They could hear all the stories they want, but they haven't really seen it. So Mac left, which is another one that I, I thought of. I thought, you know, I think he would can come in here and put a spark, but he wasn't my number one choice. This guy, Kendall Bryles. And you probably recognize that name, that last name for sure. Browse, Coach Browse here will turn 42 in about a week, November 10th. He's a former Texas Longhorn quarterback, currently the offensive quarter at, quarterback at TCU. So he is plays and coaches in the Big 12, coaches some big games, coaches some Power 5 against Power 5 schools. He's 11th in total offense at 466.7 yards per game last year, 7th in passing at 312 yards per game, and is one of the best in first down and third down conversion. And 
Another thing was impressive. He took an Arkansas team when he was first hired over there, the offensive coordinator. He took his Arkansas team that only, and, and you're going to see similarities here, guys, that took an offense that only averaged about 21 points a game. Does that sound familiar? I don't know. We're not even averaging that, but he only took a, a team that only averaged 40 or 21 points a game and only averaged about 340 total yards. And in his first year with the players that were there, averaged 471.4 yards per game in total offense with 236.7 yards in rushing and 235.7 yards in game per passing. So he's a kind of a, Level even run past quarter uh, offensive coordinator. He took an Arkansas team that was not moving the ball very well, definitely wasn't scoring. And in the first year with the players they already had, sparked this team. And you're going to see he's done this everywhere he's went and at some really good schools. So you also look. That year where they averaged 230 plus rushing yards, that was Arkansas's most rushing yards in over 20 years. In his first season, he's led top offenses at Florida State, Houston, Florida Atlantic, and at Baylor. And this was right before Rule got there. At each of those schools, his offenses were ranked among the best in the nation. And what I liked about it is he's beat Penn State in a bowl game and he's beat Michigan State in a bowl game. So he's shown that uh, people want to think, well, it's the difference in the Big 12 and coming to the Big 10. Well, he's shown that he could beat these teams. This is my choice for rules offensive coordinator for 2025. Young guy, proving himself. But yes, if you recognize the name, yes, this is Art Brow's son, which was Art, if you remember, was the head coach at Baylor in 2016 when that scandal came out and the team got decimated. And that's when Rule went in there with basically nothing and brought them kind of back in three years. But I like this kid. It's not his fault. What's going on? Time has went on. It's been eight years since that happened. He is now shown he's went to other schools and done well as an offensive coordinator this is the one i would really love to have right here this guy right here i think could come in here and make a big difference and make a difference now does that mean we could get him when well, nebraska's at a point or at a stage they could they could pay you know to me money talks bs walks you know what i mean we all heard that money talks and you know you saw chip kelly go back to ohio state as a Offensive coordinator. I guarantee you, Ohio State forked out the money. And I'm not comparing him to him, but to be honest with you, I think I'd rather have Kendall Bryles here than Chip Kelly. Like I said, he's young, got lots of years left, and you never know. Can end up growing into uh, the next head coach here when Rule moves on. If Tony White doesn't do it. I would love to see Tony White stay and continue with the defense. And maybe when rule moves on, give Tony White a shot right here in Lincoln. Because if you guys are like me, I'm afraid if Tony White moves on to any school, which everybody thinks he will next year, we're going to lose a few of these uh, defensive players. You know, it's, it's really hard to say. I understand everybody's kind of frustrated with what's happening, and it ain't all uh, Marcus Satterfield's fault. The You know, players got to go out there and make the plays. And if they've just made a play here and there, but it seems like in key situations, in pressure situations, when we need to make a play and move the ball down the field, that's where I see Satterfield struggle a little bit. It's almost like, He's run, he's run some good plays, but why didn't you run that tight end toss for the two-point conversion against Ohio State? Why didn't you run that on that fourth down play? That might have been perfect for that one at that touchdown. It's just at times when you've seen him, the, the screens, he goes back to these screens, and I understand they're saying you got to be able to run the screen. When they bring the 
when these defensive lines and they bring the guys and you know and, and blitz like that, you the, the screen's the best thing for it. It's the best to me. It's the best thing for it if it works. If you know how to run it right, you're just doing them a favor. If you can't run it, and I think we've kind of proven that we don't can't really run it as well. Doesn't mean we can't get better. That's a practice thing. We're doing them a favor if we're going to do that and not only not get any yards, lose yards. You almost basically gave them the sack. If that that's the case, try to find someone downfield. If you take a sack, it's no different. At least you went down the field or was looking downfield. But I know that's going to be the topic for a while. But again, this is my choice. And tell me, guys, what you guys think. Is this who you think? Do you have someone else in mind? Who do you, what do you think? So you think Satterfield ought to be just let go, fired? Or do you think give Satterfield another year? Because Dylan Rowell is just a freshman. Barney's just a freshman. But we're going to lose a lot, guys. I think the offensive line, I think offensively, we're definitely going to have to. The question is, do we have the wide receivers, the quality of wide receivers to play in this league? Do we need someone like a Jeremiah Jeremiah Smith from Ohio State or a Michael Terry the Third that we're trying to still get? Or is there we're going to go and just deal with who we have right now? who's come in right now and who we bring in or are they going to look in the transfer pool and see if we could get one of those top notch. It seems like some of these other teams, Indiana was one went out there and got a couple wide receivers. that's kicking it in. And for some reason, ours isn't. So there's a little more there. I think there's a little more there to it, but again, I really wish they would just uh, hire another guy to run the offense and, they want to keep Satterfield on because, like I said, they can have as many coaches as they want. That's fine with me. He could be a tight end coach. He could be a co-offensive coordinator and maybe learn from someone else. Might take offense of learning from someone like this that's only 40, about to be 42. But I'm 61. You know, my boss is 20-plus years younger than me. I don't think nothing of it. Tell me what you think. So, Again, like that, if you want to shoot me an email, jeff at bigredcountry.net, just go ahead and shoot me an email. And again, guys, like always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. doesn't cost you anything. And of course, smash that like button. Till the next video, go Big Red.